On February 3rd, the town of East Palestine, Ohio, experienced a hazardous material event that no community should have to suffer from. A Norfolk Southern train carrying hazardous material crashed just outside the town and 38 cars, more than a quarter of the train, derailed. Plastic pellets from one of the derailed cars caught fire with engulfed and engulfed other rail cars, including five carrying vinyl chloride. After burning for two days, authorities became concerned that the vinyl chloride in one of the tanks was undergoing a chemical reaction that made it bigger and more dangerous. The authorities then initiated a controlled burn of the remaining vinyl chloride in five tanks to prevent a greater catastrophe. 2,000 residents were forced to evacuate and a community was forever changed. We look forward to hearing the witnesses and especially appreciate the Palestine moms for their leadership and we look forward to hearing from Ms. Allison this morning. Let me be clear, this hearing is not only though about East Palestine derailment. Less than a week ago, a Burlington Northern Santa Fe trail, train derailed in my state of Washington, the Swimmish Reservation in Skagit County, spilling 5,000 gallons of diesel near Padilla Bay waterfront, a very sensitive aquatic ecosystem. These are important issues for all of America, and we look forward to working in a bipartisan basis on this problem. Fire Chief Comstock, I know, will be testifying, and he knows better that a fire department needs to deal with the hazardous materials, and we will be asking you what Congress can do to better equip the firefighters who have to respond. These derailments have occurred during a concerning trend. That is, we can't have railroads adopt operating models focused on just cutting cost to achieve higher profits and then have higher accident rates. We need to invest in the modernization of equipment that will provide the safety we need. From 2017 to 2021, railroads cut their workforce by 22% and reduced investment in the network by 24%. And at the same time, accident rates increased by 14%. We will dive into these details today to better understand what is that about. Today, we will hear from Senators Brown and Vance about their bipartisan legislation, the Railway Safety Act of 2023, and from Ohio Governor Mike DeWine about his experience in responding to the derailment. We will hear from, as I mentioned earlier, East Palestine resident Misty Allison, who will give a firsthand account of how the derailment impacted her community. We will also hear from a second panel of witnesses who will speak to rail and hazardous materials, materials safety policy failures that contributed to the derailment and what steps are necessary to protect communities, employees, and the environment. NTSB Chair Hamadi will be here, and I look forward to asking her about their agency's recommendations to improve rail safety and about what investments in detection devices are necessary. Mr. Whitaker, you and your coworkers who have raised questions about safety will hear from you about why you believe these concerns have gone unaddressed. And we will hear from Norfolk Southern CEO Alan Shaw about these trends and what he is going to do to ensure that safety is the top priority. A month ago, I sent letters to seven Class I freight railroads asking for information about their hazardous material safety practices. Nearly all of them failed to provide the committee with the specific information that were requested. I have to say BSNF did provide us with information about past inspections, but we need clear information from organizations where we are today with safety inspections. Let me be clear, we need to know exactly what organizations are doing today to make sure inspections are helping us to detect problems. I introduced legislation in 2015 that has some of the same provisions that we now see in the Brown-Vance bill. I wish some of those had been implemented sooner. 
Our two colleagues, though, are working very diligently to make this a top priority here in Congress and working hard to represent these communities. I believe that our committee can work in a bipartisan fashion to improve rail safety, but it shouldn't go unnoticed that the same issues are plaguing us in other areas of transportation. If you want to have the safest system, you have to have the most modernized equipment, the most minimal of workforce standards, and you have to continue to improve safety. With that, I'll turn it over to the ranking member, Senator Cruz, for his opening comments. 